Hi everyone! Today's video is going to talk about one of my favorite tools for Canvas. Canvas is the learning management system that my district uses to process students' grades and assignments and everything like that. So this tool is one of my favorites. It's called the Canvas Learning Mastery Gradebook. What it does is allow me to track specific standards that I input into Canvas for each one of my students. This video is going to take you through an overview of what this Canvas Learning Mastery Gradebook looks like and some considerations that you should go through before actually diving into the technology. The next video will show you how to dive into that tech and set it up once you're ready. Let me show you an overview of what this looks like, what we're going to be setting up today. So this is just one of my Canvas courses and I'm clicking on grades. You can see here that it is a traditional looking gradebook, but I have this option right here when I click this gradebook button to switch to Learning Mastery. And when I do that, you will see all the data points that I've been collecting across the course of this year are entered right here. And these are my Common Core standards. So you can see when I hover over it um, that for each particular standard, we get a graph of how my students did on this particular standard at this point in time. Um, and right now I have outcomes hidden if um, I haven't analyzed a specific standard. So for instance, I don't have any data on this one right now. So I can just kind of hide all of that information and now we get to just take a look at what has been actually assessed. And this is just the teacher view. So uh, students wouldn't have access to any of this. What students would see instead is um, going to look like this. So you can click on a specific student's name and click on grades. And this is what the Learning Mastery Gradebook would look like for a student. So typically when they come to Canvas, they click this grades button right here on the left and um, the system defaults to assignments. So most students aren't even aware of this tab right here unless the instructor actually tells them to click on it. And once they click on it, they will have whatever standards um, in terms of the categories that you have set up, they will see that here. And then they can actually click on the drop down menus and they can see specific standards. So let's take a look at this one right here. This student has mastered that standard. This is a specific assignment that I created in Canvas and I assessed their um, level of formal tone in that assignment and this student mastered it. They had a distinguished level. For an introductory paragraph, this student was competent, which is mastery. It's not exceeding mastery. And the student can go through each standard and look at exactly how they scored and keep track of their progress. So if a student is having many levels of developing, you can then create reflections for them to identify where they have not yet met mastery and what steps can they do in order to achieve it. So there is one flaw that I do see with the system I would like to point out, and that is when a student goes to click on the drop down menu, they have these lists of standards that you have entered into Canvas. And of course the student is not very aware of the standard themselves and the wording with those standards. I was hoping that this system would allow students to hover here or anywhere and see the actual terminology. But as you can see here, um, the system is actually just telling students how mastery is calculated when you hover over this I. So um, as long as you've selected it to be the same for each standard, it's gonna give the same information. Um, what I recommend to kind of get around this flaw is see for this particular standard, I actually copied in the numerical code for the standard. Um, if you do that for each one, you can then, then tell students that they could just copy and paste this code into Google and it will actually take them to the wording of the standard itself. So that is a bit of a workaround with the flaw that I see. 
Um, otherwise, the way that students would be able to access the terminology of the standards is by clicking on the outcomes tab here and you just have to make sure that you have outcomes enabled um, as visible on your Canvas page in order, in order for students to do that. So when a student clicks on outcomes, then um, they would see the same categories here, but when they click on it, they would um, actually just see the actual standards themselves and the terminology. So now that we've seen an overview of the Canvas Learning Mastery Gradebook, what we're going to do now is conceptualize how to set this up. So we're going to take this step by step. And the very first thing that you need to do is to consider what are your categories. When it comes to your standards, are they already divided for you? So for English Common Core Standards right now, we have reading literature and reading informational texts and I group that together as just one category called reading. We have language or grammar standards. We have speaking and listening standards, and then we also have writing standards. Um, you'll notice here that I have another category called power skills. So um, these are obviously not standards that are given to us by the state curriculum. However, you can choose whatever categories you want to assess for students. And just because you are entering a category here does not mean that you are grading a student on a specific item like time management in the traditional Canvas gradebook. You can keep track of mastery on whatever standards you have and not necessarily attach it to point values that are going to affect a student's overall grade. So something I want to recommend is that when you're developing your categories, as you can see here, that you make them as concise as possible. And the reason for that is because when you are entering your categories here in the Outcomes tab, these are the same categories the student is going to see when they go to their own individual Learning Mastery Gradebook. So um, if I toggle over to the view of this individual student, you can see that they have the exact same drop-down options that um, we had here. And um, the reason why there are two for writing is because when I go into my writing tab, I decided to create two additional folders to differentiate explanatory writing from narrative. So this means that if you create a folder within a folder, all of those folders are going to appear on the student view. And we don't want to overwhelm our students with too many uh, drop downs that then have several standards within them. So um, unfortunately, there's not a way that I'm aware of to hide any um, standards. If um, there isn't any data, as you can see, um, this one hasn't necessarily, um, or this one says no alignments, this hasn't necessarily been um, evaluated yet, but it's still going to appear there for the student. So being concise with your categories is important. The next important thing to consider is when you are considering how you are going to um, measure your student's mastery, what do you want your rubric language to look like? So this is an example of my mastery scale, and I have chosen to use this terminology very specifically. I have the terms distinguished, competent, developing, novice, and insufficient. What I have also done is provided students with a table that decodes these terms for them. So I found that the first time I just threw the word competent at them, they thought it meant developing. So I gave them a chart and I defined each term. I gave them dictionary um, definitions of what each term actually means. And um, I also talked about the conversion of if you score as competent on something like a close reading, what does that mean for your grade in the traditional Canvas gradebook? So um, one natural, natural inclination is to um, align these pretty easily with letter grades. So in, insufficient, obviously, you haven't given me enough details. That's an E. This might be a D. This would be a C. This would be a B. And this would be an A. 
Um, for some people, if you feel that giving a rating of competent as a B is not necessarily fair because it's competency, the student is technically doing it, it's mastery, it's just not to the level of um, distinguished mastery, then another option is to make this 100%, this a 90%, so you have an A plus and then an A minus, and then this might be your B level, your C, and then this could be the D to E range. So spend some time developing your language and terminology because you are going to want to decide that before you set everything up. This means that whenever you're using this rubric, if you're giving students a hard copy rubric, you're going to put these terms right at the top of that rubric. So instead of where we traditionally write um, five, four, three, or one, two, three, or whatever the numerical point values are, instead of just having this part on our hard copy rubrics, I would actually recommend eliminating the, num the numerical values altogether and only putting the terms on your hard copy rubrics. Unfortunately, here I cannot um, do that. I have to put in the numerical values as well, but there is a way that we can get rid of them later, which I'll go over. But so it is important that you decide on your terms now because for every single standard that you see here, you are going to be creating this rubric. So if you decide after you've input all of your standards that, oh, I don't really like these terms, I wanna change them, you would then have to go back and change every single standards rubric terminology. The next thing for you to consider before we actually dive into the technology and begin setting up these different elements is how you want the system to calculate mastery. It says calculation method at the bottom here, and I have four options. So most recent score simply means that um, whatever assignment I have graded most recently for my students, whatever score they get is going to be reported as mastery. So um, as you can see here, if I have set my mastery level to a four, meaning in order for this student's gradebook to say that they have achieved a mastery level, as you can see that they have gotten here, then um, I can set that to be, it has to have reached distinguished level. But you can see that I have maybe for a more difficult standard, put it at the three. So if they're competent, I can count that as mastery. So you can decide to make this different depending on the standard because if one is more rigorous or more encompassing than others, then that could be a fair argument. Um, and if they have achieved a four on maybe that second assignment, so this is an example of four different assignments that could have been graded, even if they have previously gotten a four, if I have this set to the most recent score denoting mastery and they go down, then um, that mastery level is gonna go away. That being said, you could change it to highest score. So now seeing that same assignment grading distribution, if they've ever achieved that four, then it's going to stay as having mastered in the grade book. So um, the other options are decaying average. Um, I have not personally used this one, but you can set whatever number you want to right here. And it says most recent results count as 65% of mastery weight, which is whatever number you've entered. And average of all other results count as 35% of weight. So the most recent assignment is going to count more heavily um, than all the other previous ones. So that could be a compromise. And then the other option is number of times. So if you want to simply say that the student needs to have gotten a four on this assignment or the standard five times, so mastery level of four, five times as the frequency, you could do that. Um, I personally am not in favor of this option because I don't always know exactly which assignments I'm going to be giving and how many times I'm going to be assessing one standard throughout the year because um, we as teachers respond to needs of our students as we get assignments and we grade them and we realize we have to maybe do some reteaching. And um, for that reason, I think I'm not structured enough to be able to choose this option, but for those of you who are, it could be a great opportunity. 
So to recap, the three things to consider before we dive into the technology are your categories for your standards, and then your rubric terminology, and then finally, how you wish to calculate mastery in the Canvas Learning Mastery Gradebook. Now we're ready to dive into the technology and actually go ahead and set this up.